I remember the Texas heat. It takes me back to the time of laughter and the smiles shared while the sunset lingered. I was an only child. I was foolish enough to think that everything was fine with my family, that we'd be like this forever. Little did I see my family fading away. Finally, the day came. My parents, they got divorced. The day the incident happened was the last day I ever saw my mother again. I was kidnapped by a man of the name of Joshua Robin Bennett. That man, he was my own father. During the kidnapping, he shot my own mother, May Me, and with the help of my stepmother, Marcella, kidnapped me and forced me to live in hiding. After my kidnapping, I moved to New York. I went to an all girls high school. It made it a lot easier for me to focus on my studies. After that, I graduated from Columbia University and Pratt Institute, where even though it was hard, my determination got me through it. I earned a scholarship to Paris, where I met a lot of important people who helped influence my work. I, I got a career as a graphic artist. After that, I returned to New York. I became the assistant editor of Opportunity and co-founder of FIRE. One in my jobs, I was able to review the work of other artists and poets and help give input on their work to make it better. But my life was very complicated. My parents, they controlled everything. Everything, from where I went to school, to where I could hang out with. The only thing I've ever gotten to choose is my career. Once I was free from my parents, my dreams had come true. But remember, dreams are nightmares too. He came, and romance followed. A man by the name of Dr. Albert Joseph Jackson. And soon after I married him, he died. The doctors, they don't know why. And when I thought I would never be able to love again, I did. His name was Richard Crosscup. In the end, we got married. But history has a tendency to repeat itself. And in 1980, my husband died due to a heart failure. And once again, I was left all alone, or so I thought. Eagerly lit, I kissed with the mouth of death.